All right, I've got my shutter here. That's all ready to go back into the housing. So, to do this, I'm going to pop our flash, little flash connector on there. Well, that screw goes to the center, not to the outside. And then get this mounted back into here. It only goes in one position. You have to get this little tab hooked in first. It goes about there. Now there's two things we're trying to line up here. One is this little gear here that lines up with the shaft on the back of the shutter that cocks the shutter. And we've got to make sure that our shutter release lever here is over this way. That the lever on the shutter itself down in here is over this way so that that, that will press onto it correctly. I'm just wiggling this around trying to get this connection here to be to make. Doesn't want the here we go, it's just dropped in. So if I rotate this wheel now I should be able to cock the shutter. There you go. That's all good. I'm checking the state of that flash contact. Yeah, it hasn't fallen off. I haven't put the wire in there from the top yet or done the screw up, but they'll be done up shortly. I need to get this stable first. So we've got four screws that drop down through these holes. And they're not easy to get lined up. Of course, I can't really see. Oh, yeah, that one looks like it might be in place. One, that one I could just about see if I'd had it correctly in place, and I haven't. Get the other two in place and then go back and shake the first one out of its hole. Oh, that's just about in. I'll just poke that in. They've got to drop down a long hole. And it's hard to get them quite lined up. Okay, so we've got two out of the three done. I'll look in there from the side. I think that one's gone in. It has. So the first one that dropped down here, what happened to that? It didn't go where it was supposed to. Right, let's drop that back out. Have another go. Well, I can see where it has to go. Yeah, it dropped into the hole that time. Right, I'll nip those four screws up tight. I don't want to overdo it, they're only small screws. Um, it'd be easy to strip them or shear the head straight off. Now that's good. The flash wire I've got to feed down into that little plastic connector there now. So just the end of the flash wire I need to get down in there. And this is always a challenge. I think that was it. No, it wasn't. That just went sideways instead of dropping down in the hole. This wire is a bit mutilated because 
people have had a go at this in the past, not necessarily with any great success. Right, that's not playing the game. I'll just slacken that screw off slightly on that contact, that uh, little plastic thing, to give me a little bit more space to get the wire down. This is like keyhole surgery, just trying to get this in place. I think that's connected. So I'm going to do that screw up. And then I'll get an electronic flash out and check that it works. Cock the shutter, check that the flash sink is set to X, find an electronic flash. Well, I found a flash. And it seems to work. Test it once again. Wait for that. Yep, yeah. okay, so the flash is certainly working, so my connection is good. That shutter is ready to go back on the camera. I want to clean these, the rangefinder coupling here. I'm just making sure that there's no build up of grease or oil or dirt or dust that would stop this moving freely. Um, I wouldn't expect there to be a problem, but you never know your luck. Right, that looks good. Now to assemble them from the front. We start with our pin. This tube goes on with the collar goes to the to the to the front of the pin, to the thick end of the pin. Then this very thin collar goes on. And then this gets fed in from the front of the shutter this little hole here. It goes right through the shutter. You can see it sticking out the back of the shutter here. The big brass follower goes on there. It's got a small hole at one end, a large hole at the other. The small hole goes on the tube, on the pin. Then we've got our little collet. The big end of the collet goes on the pin, the small end sticks out. And how far does the collet go down? Well you want about a millimetre of pin visible past the end of that collet. Let's see if I can get you to see that there. There you can just see it. You want about a millimetre of pin visible past the end of the collet. And that's all you need. So there we go, that's that shutter with the rangefinder coupling in place, the flash connection ready, it's all ready to go back on the camera body, which of course has not been assembled yet at this time. 
and it will be shortly. It's time to get back to servicing this Retina 3S camera. I have the shutter fully serviced. That's back on the front mount. It's time to do something with the body. So I've got my componentry all clean here, ready back from the cleaning. It's uh, been through the degreaser and then through the ultrasonic cleaner, which effectively means that all grease and oil and contaminants have been removed. I can see there's still some staining on here, and that's very dried grease. It looks like the uh, whether it's wax or dust or something of that nature, that piece will need to be looked at. The other componentry looks good. Here's a bit of evidence of some rough handling by a previous assembler. That's a fingerprint embossed in there. And basically the pers their perspiration is etched into that surface. And so there's quite a neat fingerprint left in there. That means that that piece must have been oil free when that happened of course. So perhaps right back to earliest assembly. Alright, just checking to see what I've got to do here. Normally I will start with assembling all the componentry here for the range finder and frame selection. So I have to gather together those parts. There aren't very many of them fortunately. There's our return spring. And the arms. I've got all my fasteners here. They've all been through the cleaner too. We need three nice clean countersunk head screws. They'll do nicely. And there should be one tiny washer. There it is. I'm not sure I can get my tweezers on that to pick it up. Here we go. Of course it immediately wants to disappear across the room. Here we have it, that's the washer we need. Those are all the parts I need to get that mechanism back into place. To follow that, what will I want? I suppose we could deal with the tripod socket would be a handy thing. And that's held in with three screws. And it's the third of them. Here I've got the rewind post and the rewind shaft and they can certainly go back on after that. So we've got two nice clean screws for that. And beyond that point we start assembling the film advance mechanism. Right, start assembling this. These springs, for one reason or another, are easily lost. I don't know why, they're big enough and ugly enough, you think that'd be hard to lose, but I've certainly had one or two disappear on me. And it's sitting in place. Just get that.
spring hook behind this arm here. That's right, that's what it needs to do is provide the return tension for that arm. I'm zooming you out, otherwise you'll see nothing as I shift this thing about. This, this little arm, it's got a tiny roller on the top. And of course, that'll be quite dry at the moment because this has been cleaned to death. So that's good. I'll put a tiny spot of molybdenum paste on the pivots of this arm, top and bottom. It doesn't take much. What else needs to go in? This, the transfer shaft. Double-ended gears at both ends of this thing. The piece with the flange on it goes back towards the body at the back. Those up in that corner. And that is held in place by this piece. But at the moment we're interested in getting this arm in place. Now we had a tiny washer, a spacer. It goes underneath that. And then that goes into a hole in that arm there. And the top of that arm goes into a little pinhole here. We'll swing that plate down into place, like that. Now this is held with three screws, which I carefully hid over here where I can't find them. And a screwdriver would be a useful thing too. Right. Tighten those three screws up. That's that. Flip this rangefinder arm forward. This should roll back underneath it like that. That looks very good. Now taking my molybdenum paste, I'll give a little wipe to this arm either side at the top there so that it moves smoothly. And that spring that I has just popped back out of place, let's spring that back into place. Oh, it's a bit reluctant. I think that might need a little uh, adjust to persuade it to stay swung across where it needs to be. Find some heavier tweezers. Yes, that spring's a little bit 
not lying flat there I want that to go the other way if anything so we'll just give that a little adjust and pop it back in place And that might have been a bit much because now it wants to pop off the post. So that sound you probably didn't hear was the spring trying to get away. That's it, that's happier. I'm happier about the state of it anyway, that's the main thing. What did I promise you next? Oh, that's right. We'll put the uh, tripod socket back on the base of the camera. Tripod sockets on the retinas are often loose. That's probably where screws will just loosen up over time anyway that's quite normal tripod sockets get a fair bit of abuse some older tripods in particular the screw at the top was often poorly formed often had a bit of a taper on it and the further you screwed it in, the tighter it went really. But basically it was very common for that to, to distort or damage the tripod socket and the camera if you went overboard. And people often go overboard. That's their tripod socket. The rewind. That's what we want to put in next. So using a bit of synthetic grease. I'll grease the inside of this bush. This bush has a spring-loaded clip in there. It provides the detent. That's good. And we have two screws for this. Do those up nice and tight. Alright, starting to look fairly much like a camera body again. Film advance components next. And normally I start by putting in the lock lever, which the job of the lock lever is to lock the film advance when the frame counter reaches number one. And the release lever, which runs through here, and the release lever releases the film advance to allow you to wind on to the next shot after you've released the shutter. So those components next. Well this spring here is the return spring for the rele release lever and it has to fit over this boss here. So it's always a bit of an act to get it in place. I take them off while I'm cleaning components because otherwise it's prone to get lost.
that one went on without much of a fight, which is a bonus. You must make sure that this spring lies nice and flat, um, otherwise it'll tend to want to work its way off. Right, so, back to installing it in the body. Hang on, going the wrong way. That's better. Start with the body. So, I wipe a little bit of molybdenum paste in these places here, these three holes. That's for the lock lever and the release lever. And here, I rub a bit of molybdenum paste on the inside edge there. Now that's where that spring on the release lever moves up and down. The top of the body, rub a bit of molybdenum paste in these two holes. That's where the release lever and the lock lever come through. So the lock lever first. The lock lever drops into here, passes up through the top of the body, and then we want a spring. There are two springs, much the same size here. One does the release lever, one does the lock lever. The lock lever is the finer spring. The one for the rele release lever is a stronger spring. Heavier wire and more turns. So this goes on over the top of our lever. And holding that back carefully, I can put the circlip in place that retains it and pop that into position. So there's our lock lever in place. The release lever next. Release lever drops down here in the corner. When you're putting it in place, be careful of this spring here. Don't catch it on the end of the body. You'll make a mess of it. You'll bend it up out of shape. And you don't want to bend it up out of shape because there's every likelihood you'll end up breaking it, trying to straighten the thing up. So I'll put its return spring on the top. Then this has a large headed screw on the top, which is adjustable. And you adjust that screw by winding it in or out to synchronise the release of the shutter with the release of the film advanced lock. That's down far enough to keep it in place, that's probably about right. So there's our lock lever and release lever in place in the body. And the next task to deal with is to get the film advance shaft and the take up spool and its bush in place in the body. So I'll get set up to do that. Right, starting with this take up uh, advance shaft here, I'm just looking at the state of it. Now I notice that the end of it, the cam plate on the end is loose, it's rattling. So what I'll have to do is attempt to rivet it back down firmly. And in the centre here you can see where the centre of the shaft comes through this cam plate. And I will punch around the outside of that uh, shaft coming through the middle to spread it out, to rivet it over. And what I want to achieve is for this to be nice and tight on the end of the shaft so it's not rattling. And also to make sure that it's square. Otherwise, as you swing the advance lever um, round, instead of moving in a single plane, it'll want to swing up and down, and uh, inevitably it'll rub on the bodywork somewhere. So that's my first task here before I can do anything with this shaft, put it back in the body, is just to rivet that thing back in place. So I'll get that done. <laughs> 